Okay, so um, there are, among the um, uh, emerging trends that are defining uh, modern astronomical research, there's two in particular that I want to highlight that is motivating my talk. The first is uh, the rise of Python as a, uh, an environment for, for doing research, and I don't have to go into the reasons why. Um, uh, the reasons I've written there should be uh, very familiar, um, but uh, I might also say as part of this is that this blurring of the line between developers and users uh, is enabled by the flexibility that is um, provided by, by Python. So it's a very powerful tool for modern research. The other uh, uh, trend is the um, availability of online data archives. And uh, this is uh, defining in a lot of ways the kind of research that we do. Um, much of the research that people do today is inherently multi-wavelength, multi-wave band. When an astronomer gets their data from the telescope, um, uh, more often than not, the scientific questions require that they actually go get data of that same, those same sources at other wave bands from other observatories. And it's very nice to be able to go to those websites and to be able to um, uh, you know, find images of that, that source and download them. And, uh, and more and more, those archives are providing programmatic interfaces so that people can um, you know, connect with a uh, specialized client application or maybe a, uh, a script, which is where Python comes in. And so um, if you are doing this kind of multi-wave band um, uh, research and you need to get data from uh, different observatories, you might recall the insight provided by that seminal astronomer and philosopher Donald Ren Rumsfeld, who uh, talked about the, um, the data that, sh that we know about, that is our favorite data surveys and, and uh, uh, archives like uh, Sloan and CDS and 2MASS. And then there's the data that you, you don't know about that um, maybe is related to your research. And, uh, and you would like to, be, to get a very complete picture of what data is available um, and maybe um, access uh, some um, data that you take advantage of data you may not um, be aware of. So um, there's a certain phenomenon uh, that is perhaps uh, fairly familiar now, known as the virtual observatory. And before I get into this, maybe I might ask uh, for a raise of raising of hands for of people who are actually working in astronomy in some way, either as a developer or a, a researcher. Okay, most people. And so, um, um, and how many people have heard these two words uh, used together in a sentence? Um, virtual observatory. Okay, great. So I won't dwell on it, um, but the idea is that it's an environment for conducting astronomical research on the network, and it's meant to take advantage of all those online archives and the wealth of data that they provide from all around the world. And, and this access is powered by uh, a set of open standards, um, and these standards have uh, been uh, developed uh, through this um, alliance of uh, projects from around the world known as the International Virtual Observatory Alliance. And it gives applications and clients common ways of interacting with ar these archives. And uh, a lot of uh, wh uh, what uh, it enables, um, but not exclusively, and, and also what I'm going to mostly focus on is searching and retrieving data. So. Um, uh, in easy to understand comic book format, this is the kind of um, uh, scenario that we're trying to um, address that if you wanted to get an idea of all the different data that's available on, a, on your favorite source, you would have to visit each of these archives, either their web pages or maybe their programmatic interfaces, and um, you know, use their individual interfaces to get the data and bring it together and then, then integrate it. And so um, what the VO is trying to do is to provide a common way of talking to all these different archives and, and in, in an environment that's easy to integrate that data through uh, these standards. Now, that isn't to say that there isn't value in these custom interfaces that the, these different archives provide, um, uh, but there is certain kinds of science or certain kinds of uh, uh, discovery that you can't do easily um, with these uh, heterogeneous interfaces, especially this question of what exists about my source, uh, what, you know, uh, comprehensively speaking. 
So the standards that the virtual observatory uh, it's developed is to, to kind of enable new kinds of, uh, of science and discovery. Um, so a lot of what, what those standards uh, uh, deal with is the discovery of the, the archives themselves and what services are out there that might help you. And this is handled through something called a registry. Um, and then once you have found these archives that might have data that you want, you can search those things and then download the data sets. Or they might have catalogs of different varieties, and you can query those catalogs in simple or complex ways. Um, we have data set exchange formats, the uh, VO table. You've heard uh, one of those. Um, there's access to remote storage. Another very interesting one uh, that people might be interested in this room is, is called SAMP. It's about getting applications to talk to each other, whether they're on the desktop or in a, your web browser. But basically, you, if you find, if you have data in one thing, you can tell another application to load it or to do something with it. So it's a little messaging um, protocol. So the VAO, which is the project that I work with, is a NASA NSF funded project to basically do VO um, in support of US astronomers. Um, and it's one of many projects that are so funded around the world. And uh, we collaborate with those other those other projects. So the idea is to, to basically build and maintain a, a basic infrastructure that allows this kind of discovery and interoperability. And then we collaborate with these other projects to develop new standards as needed, um, but uh, also to enable and promote development and use of these capabilities. And that can be in the way of end user applications um, that either run in the browser or on the desktop. Um, but, and we also support people that have data or want to put up services to help them do that in a compliant way. And we also want to enable just generally other developers to, to take advantage of these capabilities, integrate them into their tools and uh, libraries and such. So um, there are two products that we are working on in the Python realm to help um, allow you to access um, VO capabilities through Python. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about mostly is called PyVO. It's uh, a pure Python implementation based on AstroPy, and, uh, and its current focus is on data discovery. So you can go to the uh, registry and find uh, archives that have services that might have um, give access to data that you're interested in. And then once you found those archives, you can then uh, uh, send queries to those archives to get at data or records from uh, various catalogs and, um, and then download them. Another uh, similar product is called VO Client, and this is based on a C library implementation, and its uh, audience is slightly different. It's, it's this C library implementation at its core is, is meant for binding not just to Python, but to other languages and well, as well, including uh, C++ is an important one for us. Um, and, and it's meant to help some of the existing analysis packages like CASA or um, uh, IRAF uh, to integrate uh, VO uh, capabilities into that application. Uh, so, but Python is one, one uh, of those languages uh, we're going to bind to th with this product. And, uh, and it shares a common API with PyVO. Uh, but it also goes beyond what we're doing in PyVO to, to produce higher level interfaces that uh, make it easier to do more complicated things. Say if you want to collect data from many archives and download it in a script, you want to be able to manage the data, do things asynchronously, you know, manage cache and such like that, and then maybe communicate with other applications uh, what, with that data. Um, so uh, let me uh, zoom in on PyVO a bit. Um, uh, I want to show you some code, what you can do with this. Uh, say you want to build a catalog of uh, available images. Um, and in this example, I've tried to uh, sort of highlight uh, some, of the, some of the characteristics of the API. Um, and with this uh, color coding, things that are in black are meant to be um, highlight uh, specific aspects of the PyVO API. Um, so in this first bit, we can do a search of the registry looking for services that give access to images in the X-ray wave band, and then we get back a, a list of, of, of archives. 
And we're interested in x-ray images of uh, Cas A, uh, supernova remnant. And, um, uh, and now, uh, now that we know what archives may have data of, of, uh, of x-ray images, then we can go in and ask if they have images uh, of Cas A. Uh, at that position of Cas A. And we're going to save the results as a CSV file. Um, so what I can do is uh, I can uh, iterate through the records that are in that list of archives that got returned. And uh, I can do a search on, on each one with the position and then a, a, just a rectangular region around that position. Uh, something goes wrong, I can catch the error and, and, and deal with it in some way. Um, uh, and then for each of the images that I find, I'm going to remember, I'm going to store basically the, the URL that I can use to get at it, but I'll also, I can store other information in my little catalog, um, like what archive it came from and what the position of the, uh, of the image is, the center position. So um, uh, this can take a little, uh, a little bit of time to run, uh, doesn't it? terribly long depending on the responsiveness of the services. But so I did this earlier and I wanted to show the results. Um, so what you can see for a lot of these, um, you know, it searched the various archives. Sometimes it didn't find any images, sometimes a few. Chandra had 400. Um, but I also want to show um, uh, what happened in a couple other cases. Um, in a couple cases like this one from uh, um, this, uh, this heavens at ISDC uh, um, data set, you know, came back with, or this TCAT one, uh, came back with a whole bunch of uh, warnings from the VO table library that something wasn't uh, quite right in the response format, um, but it was able to extract the information anyway, so that was saved. But in this case, talking to Ned, there was something wrong with their service, and so um, it uh, failed, so we just skipped over that one. Um, uh, to, to go on. So you will have that um, in the VO. Things will go wrong, and, and so you want to be able to, uh, to deal with it. So um, some of the uh, design features I wanted to highlight is, uh, uh, OK, uh, first of all, uh, iteration is, is meant, is provided as kind of a natural Pythonic way of processing results from these queries. Um, and in particular, with when you're doing discovery, um, sort of accessing um, the results tends, tends to be row-based, as you saw in, the, in, in that example. Uh, once you get into delving into individual catalogs that might have fluxes of uh, sources that you're interested in, then you might be extracting data column-based. And we rely on uh, AstroPy's capabilities to do that uh, very nicely. Um, another thing is, is that the API we provide is meant to um, act as kind of a usability layer between the user and the underlying standards that are being, that have been implemented. And so in, these, in this implementation, the, the standards that are for these services is fully implemented. Um, however, we um, provide sort of uh, ready access to the most important bits of that standard. Um, those are uh, sort of highlighted most. Um, and in particular, we, we try to set this up so that the user doesn't have to read the standard to understand the results. That is, um, um, the, uh, the objects are not only documented themselves, but um, there are some ob you know, obvious properties that you want are available as, as properties. Um, and so, so it, this API is kind of a, uh, a layer that helps the user understand what they're getting back without having to be familiar with the underlying standards. Um, so, um, uh, in, the, in that example you saw, we just called these functions to do the queries, but underneath there are actually some objects to provide some um, uh, capability for interacting in kind of a richer way. And here's an example in which I'm going to find, uh, get cutouts from the NVSS survey of a bunch of sources. Um, and... Uh, um, and you, so you make your list of sources, and you get a list of sources in whatever way. Maybe you load it in from a, from a catalog or something like that. And then um, you can create a query object and set 
set its parameters, and then um, uh, then the only thing that changes in this query is the position, and we just reuse this query object. Um, and then we can just download the results um, and, and cache them locally. There's another bit you can do that's uh, pretty helpful for debugging or otherwise understanding what's going on underneath the covers. You can actually print out the query string, which is just a URL that's going to the service. And so, um, and you could manipulate that or throw it into your web browser and look at the raw results if you wanted to. So getting VO into developers' hands is, uh, is uh, again, an, an important purpose of the VAO project um, in general. And the purpose of PyVO is twofold. Uh, first of all, we want to provide researchers and developers access to the VO capabilities via Python, just like I, I showed there. But also, um, in particular, we want to provide a platform for migrating these VO capabilities into this more uh, general package, AstroPy, that we heard about. And um, so uh, we requested, as a, as a result, uh, um, to become a, an affiliated package to enable that um, interaction with the development of AstroPy. And so currently, AstroPy has some, some support for uh, VO uh, in it. It can do simple cone searches, and it has a very nice um, uh, VO table module. And, um, and we'd like to see uh, more support for some of these other standard services enabled as well. Um, so there's also another affiliated packages that um, sort of overlaps with the space, and that's Astro Query, that um, has uh, so far mainly concentrated on sort of the custom interfaces of these various um, archives, uh, but at the client side tries to regularize or, or standardize the interface. So, um, uh, so that's basically it.